First off, before we get started, thank you to Microchannel for allowing Solver to have this opportunity today to present our CPM product, our corporate performance management product. I know that, uh, and just kind of set the tone for everyone so everyone kind of understands what this is going to be about. I've got just a couple of quick slides. So basically, CPM is going to encompass reporting, budgeting, and dashboards. So as I kind of go through this, these slides, a lot of this will be familiar to you. So many of you will be uh, challenged with reporting. Uh, you've got multiple data sources and you're trying to grab or pull different uh, data from different places, uh, or you're using more than one tool, maybe even Excel as a part of that uh, solution. You're, you're having to have IT send you data or, or uh, elements of data, or you're cutting and pasting and doing a lot of that on a monthly basis. Uh, and that's, you know, that's, that's a, a lot. So we're gonna talk about how we, you know, if any of that resonates to you, we're gonna talk about how we uh, make that a lot easier for you. And you can see in the diagram below, you can see that we're able to pull data from different data sources. It doesn't matter if that data source is on premise or it's in the cloud. We pull that into the solver data warehouse and then that data is then available for reporting. So it's one database, one reporting tool, and one very clean user interface for, for the user to work within. If you're doing budgeting, it's gonna probably resonate with you a lot more because now you're having to pull all of, you know, first you've gotta distribute those budget templates out to the different team members. And then you've gotta consolidate all of that. And, and then comes the part where you don't wanna share the entire budget with certain people, so you've got to create multiple um, versions of a budget template and try to balance all of that. And it, it's probably quite cons time consuming when you try to consolidate everything, uh, not to mention that you've got data stored and large amounts of data stored with inside of Excel. So there becomes a data reliability issue. Uh, what if you didn't lock down the form? Uh, budgeting can be, become very, very challenging when you're doing that within the Excel environment. Now, a lot of people like Excel, so we're going to talk about, you know, how we use Excel and how that makes the solver solution um, that much more powerful, uh, and we'll talk about that here shortly. So just to give you an overall idea of the solver solution, so what, what it encompasses, you, you're familiar with this in the first slide where we're pulling in all of that data. It's going to the data warehouse. It, it's then available for report writing, but also if you're doing any of that budgeting or forecasting, uh, everything that you contribute, right, to your, your editing uh, different budget templates or you're providing content to those, those templates, that's being stored back to the data warehouse. And then the dashboard solution is pulling that data the same way that, that report writing is doing, pulling the data, and that dashboard solution is a Power BI. And we'll talk a little bit about that at the end of today's session. With that, I'm going to go ahead and just dive right into the product. So the Solver product is available uh, both in the cloud as well as on-premise. Uh, it's the same exact product and you can switch environments at any point in time and it's the same price. So uh, this, this product that you see that I'm, I'm, or this environment that I'm working in today is, uh, you can see here that there's a web address. I'm in the Solver cloud. It runs exclusively on Azure. So we are a Microsoft um, focused solution. So we run on Azure, we work with Excel. Um, uh, our data warehouse is a Microsoft SQL data warehouse. Uh, and we've been working um, closely with the Microsoft stack of technologies for more than 20 years. So you can see that I'm a super user. I have access to all of these modules uh, and all of this functionality. That would be uh, maintained by my security level. So I have, I'm a super user, so I have access to everything. If I was only a reporting user, the only tab that I would see would be the live reporting and then, of course, the home page, which is what I'm on now. So if I go into reporting, and keep in mind, too, today, I'm going to go pretty quickly. I'm going to just give you a flavor of the, of the reporting product and the budgeting product. And, of course, if you have an interest, we can follow up at, uh, at, with you one-on-one uh, -on -one at any time and dive into the product a little bit more. I'm just going to try to give you a flavor of it and show you some of the power uh, of the solver product. So within this, uh, you can see that I have a lot of different categories where I can put my reports, so I sign my reports. You can see these are all of my reports and I can scroll down and you can see I've got lots of different reports. 
I can build reports on virtually any data that I have. It doesn't have to be financial. It can be statistical. It can be related to any part of my business via any data source across my business as well. So if I were to go into, let's say, a particular category, once I click that category, you'll see all the reports that are signed. I can also search within a category. So if I said, let's search p and I'm gonna find all the P&Ls that are related to this category or group of categories. I can also uncheck these and just search all of my reports and you can see that I have quite a number of uh, P&L reports. Now this is important because this kind of sets the tone. You can see how many different P&L reports that I have, I have quite a few. So this kind of sets the tone for report writing. I can build you know, any type of report with as many variations as I want. So a lot of flexi uh, flexibility in the way that uh, reporting is designed, uh, reports are designed within the Solver product. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just clear my search and I'm gonna go into my favorites and I'm gonna show you a couple of things. Uh, so these are reports that I quite frequently work with. Uh, this report here, the reason that it's di a different color, it indicates to me that it's a report package or a report book. So it's very easy at any point in time to be able to just select the report or select a group of reports and you notice that all of these options become available and I can add them to a report package on the fly. Uh, one of the other really cool things uh, is I can copy the report. So if I said I want to make an exact duplicate of this report, I've highlighted it, I could just say let's make a duplicate. So I'm going to show you how this works. So I'm going to call this Mike's PNL 2020, and I'm going to duplicate that report. So that quickly, I have a copy of the report. You notice you don't see any, any thumbnail snapshot because I haven't run the report yet, but I can just go and run this report. Now, why would I want to make a copy of the report? It's because I might want to make some changes or edit something. So what you'll notice is that it's defaulted the parameters that I had run in the, in the original report prior to this, prior to copying it, and it's gonna make me rerun that report. So this is querying all of these different companies and all of this different data, and within just a few seconds, I have a report. So within this profit and loss, this is a typical example of you know, how you can build reports. It's not, there's no set in stone way in which you need to build reports, but it's giving you some ideas. And what you also will notice about this report is it's very Excel-like. And, and I'm gonna stop and talk about this for a second because this report and, and every budget template and every report that you build will be designed in Excel. So here you see I'm in, the, in a cloud web environment, but when I build a report or a budget template, I'm actually going out to Excel we use Excel strictly for design capabilities. We don't store any data in that in Excel. We, we use it only for design. So that gives me a lot of that, that power of you know, formulation, format, and design that everyone loves with Excel. So you'll see things like expansion groups. So if I wanted to look at administration, I can expand a little bit further. I can also drill within any reports just by right clicking and saying, you know, show me the general ledger detail. And you'll see that a new tab pops up and I have all of that data. This is all the data by default, but I could actually set this report to allow me to drill back to things like a source document. If I wanted to go back and see a vendor invoice, as long as I brought that data into the solver environment, I can drill all the way back to the vendor invoice. Within this particular report, I can also enter in comments. So if I wanted to enter in any new comments, I can do that. And we've deactivated the save button, but normally there would be a save button here. This is a shared demo environment, but I can save comments or I can add comment fields to anywhere within a report. Okay, so again, this is just an idea. I think most people that work in Excel will, will understand that you know there's a lot of flexibility with how you design reports, right? So you'll also notice that I have multiple uh, columns here where I've got my year-to-day actuals and year-to-day budget. I'm looking at an aggregated total. I can expand that and I could look at the individual totals and of course drill into all of this, this information. I skipped one of the most important things, but I'm gonna go back to this. All of these um, parameters that you see up here are defined by the person that builds the report. So within this report, I have the ability to search company or, or choose companies or select and filter companies. 
So I would only be able to select the companies or see the companies that I have access to. So I have access to all four of these companies and I could easily just come in here and say, let's choose you know, all, all of these, but wait a second, I don't want Singapore in my um, selection. And then I could just use that value and rerun the report and it's gonna immediately go out and grab the data for each of those companies and present it back into this report. Now I could have separated the, the companies out into different columns or different tabs, however I wanted to do that, but I've included all those companies in the numbers that you see here. I can also change scenario because you see that I have a budget column. So I could have um, any number of budgets or any number of forecasts. So this is saying, well, what's the scenario? If I change this to forecast, just to show you, it would change the title of forecast and it would bring back my forecast. If I had multiple versions of that, I would have version here as a parameter. This assumes I've only got one budget and one forecast that I'm using for this report, but you get the idea. And then again, of course, period, I can select period on the fly. So you can just add um, parameters uh, to fit whatever the requirements are uh, for specific reports. Okay. So some really cool stuff that you can do up here as well. I can send a report to archive. So I'm just gonna go ahead and archive this report to myself and it's now highlighted as green. And you say, well, why would I wanna archive a report to myself? Well, I, I'm gonna, I wanna take a snapshot of, of a report in time, not the period total, but you know, date, time, stamp a report, maybe for, um, you know, before I, I close my month end or something, maybe I just wanna send reports and save them in my archive. I can send as many reports in the archive as I want. Archive is also a type of user, which we'll talk about in just a minute. I can share this report on the fly with anyone. So just by walking through and saying, you know, who are the people that have access to that report? Uh, again, they're only gonna be able to see uh, the information, the filter information based on their security levels. And if they were not a live reporting user, if they were an archive user, meaning they couldn't change parameters, it would be automatic. I don't have to decide what kind of user somebody is. That's done at the setup and the security level. So I can also comment on any report. So I can build an unlimited number of comment templates. So here I've got just a couple and I'll select the management comments template and then I'll apply that. And guess where those um, templates are built? This is an Excel form. I didn't spend a lot of time building this form. Uh, I spent probably five minutes in Excel building this form, but I can go through and enter in new comments here as well. And those comments will also be stored as soon as I say save, those comments and this comment sheet by anyone who adds comments will be saved for the life of the system, the life of the report. So if anyone comes in and runs this report for these companies with this scenario and this period, they're gonna see those comments, along with any comments that were added into the actual report itself. I can export things out to Excel. Uh, I don't, I'm not gonna show this just in consideration of time, but it, but you know, exporting to Excel is not created equal across all products. When we send it out to Excel, it's automatically formatted and all the formulation goes in and it is a, an Excel static report ready to be viewed and, and uh, it's available to share with other users. The real, real thing that everyone wants to see is, well, what if I wanna make a change? I've copied this report, uh, maybe I wanted to get rid of a column or change something within the report, it all works exactly the same way. I just say, I wanna edit this report, and you notice that it's opening up the report. So from the cloud, from a shared environment in Azure to Excel, and here's the report. One of the unique things that you'll see is that, you know, if you go to Excel, you'll have a blank page and you'll have to cut and paste and pull data into it. Here, I have all of the modules. So everything is modularized with inside of the solver product. So if I were to open up my general ledger, for example, and I say, well, what's in my general ledger? Here's all the categories like accounts and, and things of that nature, right? So this is the dimensions and the attributes of data. It's not the physical data. It's the categories where the data is stored. And as you can see, I can pull things like account into um, C13, I can pull the account description into you know, D13 as well. I can copy this row, I can come down a few rows later, paste it, select different accounts. I can filter the data within this report in less than five minutes. So the rest of the report really is all about you know, your Excel skills, you know, how you design things. 
So if I went into this P&L variance percentage column, uh, our cell, excuse me, for, for example, you'll see that there's an if error formula. That transfers over into the solver environment. So again, I could dive into this later if um, you know we do a individual product demonstration for you, but I don't want to spend too much time on report design. We've got a lot to cover. But just to show you anything that I would change. So if I said I just want to change you know, the color of you know, this and I want to move my logo over to the right. I don't, I don't really like that on the left hand side. And I make those changes, I can just save that report. Now I am not saving this to my desktop. I'm not saving it to a folder. I could if I wanted to, but I don't need to. I just sent it right back into the cloud environment. And if I ever want to edit it or pull it back into, into Excel, it's always available within the cloud. So I'm really done with Excel. I could just close Excel. When I go back into the cloud environment, it says report changes are detected. Uh, it's going to force me to refresh and rerun the report. So it remembers my parameters. I can go ahead and run that report. And within just a few seconds, you can see the edits that I made to that report. So I changed the color and I moved my logo over, but it works exactly the same way no matter what I want to do. If I want to get rid of a column, add a column, any of that type of stuff, um, it's very, very easy to do with inside of the Excel environment. And I'd love to dive into this more for you if um, we had more time, but happy to do that on a, on a one-off basis. So I've made changes, it's, sh it's shared, I publish it back out to the users, and, and, and they're really set and ready to go and use this new report, okay? So just a couple of other things, uh, I'm gonna move away from this report, just give you a couple of other ideas. Uh, of things, some things that we can do. Of course, you can pull graphs into any type of report. So just the typical Excel graph. So this is outside of dashboard capabilities and you can move the screen around however you like and, and manage that. You can do things like auto refresh to automatically refresh the report so that you don't have to manually run it. So you can set it whatever frequency you, that you want. But again, here you can see another version or variation of the report uh, with, with some graphs and I can collapse that if I don't wanna see it. So it's really all about how you want to design reports uh, and I don't have to ever worry about going out and finding data, cutting data, pasting data, and I can allow those users to be able to filter this data on the fly without having to do that for them. A couple of other things that will be important to you, and it won't even really matter if you have, uh, whether it's multiple companies or multiple projects or you know anything where you would like to be able to separate that data out, I'm gonna show you a couple of really cool things. The first one is what we call dynamic expansion. And here you see that I have two companies, uh, Canada and Singapore, and they're in their individual columns. So we talked about that before. Another P&L, another different look and I've got the companies in separate columns. I could have them in separate currencies as well because we have a full currency engine inside of the, the data warehouse. Uh, one other thing that I'm introducing is that we can have unlimited trees with inside of our data warehouse as well. So here, where you, what you saw before was I was selecting individual companies, but here I can actually select at a level. Um, so what this is doing is it, it, a level within the tree is it's running all of my distribution companies and my distribution companies are Canada and Singapore. I could say, you know, you could see I have a, a couple of trees. I could go in and say, let's run this at the regional level. And I'd like to run this for Asia. And I rerun the report and you're gonna see um, different companies. So it wouldn't matter if I had two companies or I had 10 companies, uh, I could run that, run that report quite easily. So I could just go into the consolidated node level and say, run this for all of my companies and I'll be able to see, see all of my companies. So these could be, again, projects that we're here. They don't have to be companies. I can separate out those, that data and in individual columns. The other thing that I can do that's quite useful is I can use multiple tabs. So I can have the results show up on multiple tabs. So here again, you see that I've got uh, a, a tree and in the, within this environment, I've got a lot more trees so you can, filter the trees that you want people to search and work with as well. So the last one I had two, here I've got quite a few. Uh, so what you'll notice is that this was run at the geographical level at Asia, at the Asia region. And it's what it's done is it's consolidated the total uh, for the Asia region, but then it's giving me it's given me Australia and Singapore on separate individual tabs. 
right? But if I just said, you know what, I'd like to run just Australia, we have also quick parameters. These are ones that I've run, I've run this report with these, with these um, entity parameters previously. So I could just say run this just for Australia and it's gonna run it just for Australia. So quickly I can filter anything, any company, any setup that I have, and guess what? I only ever built one report. I can run a hundred different scenarios, but I've only ever built one report. So a lot of power in you know, dynamic expansion, multi-tab, a lot of flexibility within the reporting tool. Okay, so I'm gonna have to pick things up because I'm, I'm running a, a tad bit out of time. Um, so just really quickly, I talked about report books. So I wanted to show you that uh, really quickly. What that means is I can add any number of reports that I already have built just by you know, selecting add to a package. So here you can see some, some sales types of results. It doesn't matter what kind of report it is. I can, I can put in manufacturing, sales, you know, financial, whatever I really want within the report. Uh, here you see some AR analysis, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So a, a lot of a power and be able to add reports to a package if you're doing any kind of monthly board package or um, board reporting, uh, very, very useful to use this. Another way to do that uh, is in the archive, uh, an archive reporting capability. So I said that you can archive things to yourself, but also users can strictly be an archive user. So let's just say my role changed. I'm an archive user. I don't have the ability to change parameters. And I'm gonna run that same report that you saw, uh, saw me run, my, uh, copy and run Mike's p 2020. Okay, so I'm gonna run this report. And what you'll notice is I have the exact same report, but I have no ability to change parameters. I can expand things, I can drill, drill into things, I can do all of the same things that you saw before, I just do not have the ability to uh, change uh, the parameters and filter data. So this is a report that is static that was sent to me, is made available to me and I can consume it, but uh, I cannot change the parameters. So a couple of other really cool things about, about this is you have the ability to select reports and do things like side-by-side -side comparison. I can select any number of reports and I can say open up those reports. Here's a over under view, but I'm not a big fan of this view personally. I like to do the side-by-side -side view. So I have all these reports where I can pull them side-by-side. -side. So one is the same report, one is for the US, one is for Singapore, and I can scroll through them and you know drill down and look at all the data within these reports. Uh, just by adding them, opening them up side by side. And you can, of course, download that, remove the uh, headers, print it, all that kind of stuff, and that's made available by the users. Then the, the really cool thing is playlists. So if you have executives or board members where you want them to be able to not to click through a lot of things and you want to give them some level of access to where they can go and get things on the fly, this is a great tool. So you can actually publish, we have a module called the publisher, you can send them a link and they can access reports that way via archive. And what that would mean is, let's say they come into the board report, they would see the different reports that are included in the board report. You already know you can select those reports, um, but we're gonna go to the playlist. So playlist is great. All you have to do is hover over the different reports and you can see those reports on the fly. So anything that was in that report package, and here you can see an executive briefing card, I can drill into it. Uh, I can also um, look at report books within the package. So this one report has multiple reports to it. Okay. Also a really cool function of this is it has an auto narrative. It changes the language, the narrative, based on the results that were to return. So like the profitability was great. It might have said good, bad, poor, based on different um, settings that I had in the report, and it's all automatic. So that is reporting uh, in a very quick fashion. So I'm going to move on and show you uh, the budgeting tool. We're not going to spend a lot of time in budgeting, and here's why. When we talk about reporting and budgeting, it's kind of one and the same. The only difference is really is that you're doing a lot more contribution to a budget template. I can design any kind of template on it that I want. It doesn't have to be a budget or forecast template. Anything where I'd like to capture data, I can design that and then store that data into the data warehouse. So this is where I would go and build and maintain as the budget manager. But let me show you 
what it's like if I'm actually a contributor to the assignment. So I've been given an assignment. So here's my assignments. I can also have individual templates, but my assignment will contain multiple templates. So within Mike's assignment, I have one that's new, one that's in progress and I'm working on. Uh, this new one I haven't even opened yet. And then two that I also need to approve the workflow because I'm an approver as well. So let's go in and open up the other expenses. So I can see where I'm being, where I'm contributing uh, my budget to, right? One template, I could, you could pass it out to a hundred different people, same template, and they're gonna be contributing based on their individual requirements. So if it was, if everybody, you had one company, it, maybe it's just department that's different, right? So one user is gonna see department 100, the other one's gonna see 200, et cetera, et cetera. And I cannot change any of these as a contributor to the budget. It's just showing me what it is. In fact, if I didn't even want to see it, I could just expand it. And now I have more real estate to work and I don't even see those parameters. So as with everything in, inside a solver, you can add comment fields and column, comment columns anywhere you want. Obviously, all the stuff in gray was automatically populated from the data warehouse. I cannot change it. Uh, yellow in our demo environment means, hey, enter here. Right, so this is where the user would come in and say, I'm working on my travel budget. I want to change that to 4,000. Uh, maybe I just want to spread this across. They're used to this. They're using Excel, right? I want to spread it across the year and that's all I needed to do and then I'm done, right? Well, maybe it's not that easy. So maybe you need to um, do a little bit more spreading for, or line item detail underneath that. So I just popped up the spreading bar so here you can see that line, you can still see that mainline uh, account up above, and I can adjust this to however I want. But let's say that I'm gonna go through and, and spread this. I don't want it to be 48,000, I want it to be 52,000. And I can change the spreading method. I can design uh, or uh, build these on the fly, so seasonality, whatever it might be. So I'm gonna use the even method and I just spread that. So that 52,000 was spread according to the formulas evenly across all of the columns. I could have also said, you know, let's not do that. Let's let's um, let's adjust this based on 2019's budget, and I could offset some periods if I wanted to. It would make that green bar move forward or move backward, whatever plus or minus. So let's adjust this by 25% or units if I was doing a unit-based budget, and then adjust it. So now it took the 2019 budget and adjusted it by 25%. And you can see that that's been uh, allocated by period, okay? So it's, it's up above. Now you might, you, might want to want, you might be wondering why we have these little red triangles. That indicates that uh, there's line item detail. See so here you can see that I've got line item detail. If I scroll down, let me scroll a little faster, sorry. So I have line item detail. I can add as many lines as I want. I can also add comments at any at any level within here. So a lot of flexibility to to build budgets, contribute to budgets, uh, how how and forecast however I like. Okay. And once I was done with that, I could uh, just say complete my assignment or save it. Um, so if I go back here, you can see that I can save the data or I can complete it. Save means I'm coming back to it later. Uh, complete the assignment means you know, I'm done, it's, I, I can no longer make changes, it's going through the workflow approval process. So I can also at any point in time uh, add comments for reviewers of my budget throughout the process. So here you can see I have, I've entered some things uh, at, at any stage. And this is more about the form and then within the budget template itself, it's, it's more um, about individual lines and line and detail, things of that nature. So you can also always add uh, additional tabs, you notice that this, this one only has one tab really from a contribution perspective because it, it knows exactly where everything's being contributed. But this tab is, these are demo instructions, but these could easily be uh, pro procedures or processes uh, of how to contribute to the budget or policies within your, within your organization. So with that, uh, last thing I'll show with budgeting, it really works kind of the same way. It doesn't matter what kind of budget template it is, payroll or what have you, it's gonna all be the same. So it's saying, hey, I didn't save my data. Do I wanna leave? It's gonna always warn me about that. 
I'm going to go into the workflow process. Yep, I'm going to pick a workflow where there's more than one user so you see what it, what it looks like. But if I go at any point in time and review the status of a workflow, you'll see how many haven't been started, what's in progress, what's to approve, and what's completed. So I can also do this by the status, by the template, or by the user. So if I wanted to go in and look at Scott Bennett and say, what has Scott you know, completed? Where's, where's Scott at in this process? I, I would be able to do that. So very easy workflow, and you can see percentage of uh, completion uh, and, and progress as well. Okay, so with that, I'm going to try to wrap up very quickly here with the, the last um, component of that. So I've shown a little bit of, uh, I've shown a lot of reporting, a little bit of budgeting, and now we talk about dashboards. So within our data warehouse, what we essentially do is we make um, the data available via our certified app. We're probably the only CPM tool on the face of the planet that has a certified Power BI application. Um, from Microsoft, that means you go into the certified app. There um, are some secure tokens that will allow you to access to standard Power BI. And then all of that information that's going into the data warehouse from all of your different data sources that you're reporting on, all of the budgets and forecasts that you contribute to that's going into this data warehouse can easily be made available. Now, I, I wasn't planning on showing you the data warehouse, but I do want to just show you how easy it is to make it available. So you, when you saw in reporting, everything is modularized, right? Accounts, payable, receivables, everything is modularized. It can be any data. And now what I'm doing is I'm going into the API and I'm saying enable it and then which modules I want to make available and it's going to give me secure tokens. That data is now available to Power BI. So if I go, go into Power BI, when you look at things like this, this is a this is a series of six different dashboards built in Power BI, all off the same data that you um, saw me working with earlier, all this sample data. So here I have KPIs for revenues, profitability, and liquidity. If I move into the next one, I've got revenue analysis. I, if I wanted to drill into any component, such as product revenue, uh, I could do that within Power BI. So this gives me where the Excel dashboards are static, this gives me interactive um, dashboard capabilities within inside of Power BI. So we made a conscious decision as Solver not to build our own dashboard tools. Uh, again, we're a Microsoft-centric um, product to use Power BI as our dashboard solution. Just to give you some additional uh, ideas, uh, this particular sales dashboard allows me to move the different levers standard Power BI functionality. It will change all of the, the graphs, so it's very interactive. And what's great is it will tell you kind of where you are in your actual and forecast, where you need to be. I've kind of made it a little bit silly. Uh, and then ultimately, at the end of this entire process, where you, you know, select the year, select the periods, manipulate the data, look at the data, visual, visualize it, uh, make sure that the numbers are matching up. At the end of that, they have these links. If you click these, it will take you back into Solver, into the forecast and budget forms that are associated with these numbers, since you can't input into these. So you can go and walk through the different scenarios, visualize it, come up with the numbers that you need, and then pop right back into Solver and adjust the forms.